Welcome back to our second video of our Express Notes and Express Videos uh, that deals with the decision-making techniques. Decision-making is pretty relevant when we are discussing about uh, short-term. And this chapter deals about short-term decision-making. Basically, this short-term decision-making uh, is relying on relevant cost. Relevant cost is nothing else but a cost with, which is uniquely incurred or avoided as a consequence of a decision. So it's, it, it, has, it is a direct relationship with our decision that we are going to take. In other words, it is an incremental um, cost. It must be cash because it's, that's the main determinant of value. Unlike accounting profit, um, it needs to be an actual cash flow and it cannot be common with other alternative decisions. So it has to be kind of unique or differential if you want to name it like this. Right, is an example, if you want to continue transporting, um, if you want to determine continue transporting products by truck or switch to railroad, if we have the same costs for insurance, for example, in, the same, in, the, in both scenarios, that is not a relevant cost for the decision because it will be the same for both of the scenarios. Why it needs to be future? Because um, we can influence by our choice. It follows now that some costs are irrelevant, some costs are costs that are already have taken place and cannot be reversed. Um, committed costs, if they cannot be avoided, they are likewise not relevant because whether we take the decision or not, they will be the same. For example, we have a lease contract that cannot be cancelled, um, that will be not relevant to our decision for closing down a factory, for example. So relevant costs need to be identified with care. They might include also opportunity costs. Opportunity costs, you know, is the uh, cost of the best foregone decision. If, for example, want to, we want to build a storage facility on the site of the parking lot, that means that the opportunity cost of doing this will be the loss of the revenue or the margins that we were generating by the parking lot, by using our space of, uh, or area of land for uh, providing parking spaces for people. Further short-term decision-making uh, covered by your uh, section of the syllabus is the break-even analysis. Break-even analysis is based on cost, volume, and profit analysis. The break-even formula, just have a look at a short look at the uh, elements. You know that total costs are built up by fixed costs and variable costs. That means unit variable costs multiplied by the number of units we produce. And total revenue, including sales price, multiplied by the same number of units that we produce or sell. It depends. And then we have to take into consideration total costs, fixed costs, unit variable costs, number of units that we produce, total revenues earned, that is this one, and total costs are these ones, so total costs, total revenues, number of units are X, um, SP is the selling price, right, and there is contribution, that is the selling price less the variable costs and the contribution to sales ratio that is uh, the generated contribution divided by the sales prices contribution margin contribution to sales ratio then the break even can be determined um, in terms of units it can be determined as the fixed cost divided by the contribution per unit or in uh, amount or in value of sales, it can be determined as the fixed cost divided by the uh, contribution to sales ratio. If you want to have a look at this in a graphical manner, it will look something like this. It basically means that our um, break-even point occurs when our contribution equals to our fixed costs. That's, this is here, right? So we go further. Uh, now let we can see that the safety margin, again something that's important in your uh, syllabus, is just the level of the difference between your budgeted sales and the break-even point. That's either in units or in uh, uh, values, amounts, it's the same. Um, contribution is an important indicator as it shows the contribution of each unit sold towards the cover coverage of fixed costs. This is why we are dividing the fixed cost by the contribution per unit to determine where is the break-even point. In terms of relevant cost incremental analysis and linear programming, relevant costs are expected to vary with the action taken, so they are a result of our decision. As such, past costs are irrelevant because they don't change, as we discussed before, um, as, a, as a result of the decision. 
If the residual capacity fixed costs are irre irrelevant also, variable marginal costs are relevant because they are incremental to the decision. Whatever we do additionally to the previous scenario, it will increase our variable costs. And the opportunity costs, the foregone benefits by the, the um, alternatives that we give up by undertaking a decision are relevant to our decision. Applying incremental analysis in business decision making, um, it can be for accepting or rejecting a special order, something that's out of uh, the course of our normal business. So if we accept if we do want to accept something, then the selling price must exceed the variable production, production costs. Make or buy decisions. It means that if we want to make something, then the, um, the outsourcing shall be less efficient. So outsource less efficient activities if full capacities are reached or the other way around. Insource if it's more, it brings you more benefits than outsourcing. Or disinvestment, for example, uh, this divest or if um, <clears throat> all the costs and revenues generated by the uh, divested asset uh, will fall below the marginal cost of the production plus the salvage of the value of the assets because once we deal divest something then it will be sold the assets will be sold pricing decisions uh, that is another uh, chapter of your syllabus that can be influenced by man several factors. Internally, how much a product costs us to produce, while as externally, how much a customer is willing to pay for it. This is basically the market. On the other hand, it's the internal uh, factor, determining the cost of it uh, using the one of the techniques in our previous chapter. If you remember uh, the price el elasticity of demand, this is just the change in the demand divided by the change in price that can be higher or lower than one. So if the price elasticity of the demand is lower than one, then demand is considered inelastic because it changes in a slower or lower amount by compared to the price change. For example, if here you have um, a short example, if a cinema increases its ticket prices from 4 to 6, as a result the number of cinema goers drops to 2000, from 2000 to 1500. Uh, 1, so the change in the demand is just 500, expressed in percentages that will be 25%, uh, so there's a drop of 25% in, the, uh, in the demand, while as the price is increasing by 50%. So the price elasticity of the demand is 0 0.5. The demand is inelastic. The demand equation, though, is, um, is a portrait of downward sloping straight lines. So something like this. I'm oh, sorry, like this. Yep. Uh, it expresses the above relationship. So as, you sa as we said, it is, if this is price and this is quantity, if price went up by 25 or by 50%, the demand dropped by um, some amount, that's 50%. So if the price goes up from here, for example, to here, then quantity goes down. Yep. And the uh, slope of this line is just B, what we have here, and that's the price elasticity of the demand. You see here. Yep. So A is the maximum price. That's in my figure, in my uh, graph, this one, A, where actually nobody buys of our, one of our products, the Q is zero. And another example, on an average Saturday night, a cinema that has a capacity of 225 uh, seats attracts 150 visitors at the price at $5. We want to find the price in order to fill up the cinema. And what, what we know additionally is that if the price of the ticket decreases by 50 cents, then 25 more people will come. This helps us to determine uh, basically B, because we know that this is B, this is our B, <coughs> that um, if the ticket price decreases by 50 cents, then 25 people will come. Using this, we'll find A, and then putting it back into our equation, we'll find the price at which Q will go up to 225. The total cost function is something very, very similar. It's uh, just expressed in the same way. As, uh, as a straight line, we know that y is the total cost, x is the output, the quantity, a is uh, the fixed cost, and then b is the variable cost per unit. 
And then again, if you put it back, then the variable cost per unit of a bottling process is 10 cents per unit, fixed cost amount to $5,000, at an output level of 20,000 units, what's the total cost? That's just the fixed cost plus the total the, um, units multiplied by the variable costs. And that goes up to $7,000. Whenever we analyze um, the total cost function, we have to take into consideration that um, both discounts and other sales volumes might change the amount of fixed costs. If the amount of fixed cost will change, then you have to take that into consideration as a new amount of fixed cost must be included. For example, if we receive both discounts, uh, yes, then the price and variable cost may be lower. That might allow us to increase production, but at the, le at the increased level of production, our fixed cost might also increase. Okay, we'll continue our next video on pricing strategies.